as I slowly descend into madness due to the onset of quarter life crisis, let me do things that we would normally only fantasize of doing. So sit back, buckle up and live through me vicariously as I take you through a journey of steam and coal from first class all the way to no class. I will start up from the northernmost part of Thailand, travelling downwards until I touch Malaysia, cross the border of Salamat Datangli, and then just casually whip out another 1000 kilometers of railroad travelling all the way to JB, and then finally crossing into Singapore. Of course, what purpose will there be in life without a company of females? So along with me on this trip will be two dumb respectable women of independence who will eat, shit, cry, sleep with me, spanning across three countries. This is Chiang Mai Railway Station, originally built in 1922. Fuck it lah bro, let's get to the juicy deeds. I wanna start my trip off like royalty, which means I'll be taking the first class sleeper train from Chiang Mai all the way to Bangkok. In case you're wondering what that is, it's exactly what its name says it is. You sleep overnight on a train while it choo choos you all the way to your destination. There are two different timings for this route, whether it's Bangkok to Chiang Mai or vice versa. But they don't pull out the bed for you for the day timing, so if you're in it for the experience, you gotta secure the evening ticket. There are limited first class cabins available, therefore you have to book them minimally 72 hours in advance which is like 3 days. You can most definitely book your tickets online. For the experience, I've decided to do it in person to see how it goes. Doing some photo taking exercises before we even start travelling. Alright, let's do a time skip to 3 days later. Here I am, back at the entrance of Chiang Mai Railway Station. It's not that bad of an idea to stock up on necessities before going up. Every snack or roadside store is going to convince you to buy their food, claiming that there won't be anybody coming up in between stops to sell you food. Don't believe their scummy lies. There will always be people coming up to sell food in between each and every stop. Unfortunately, we got the short end of the stick because we got the older cabin. It's not just that the new cabins are cleaner or whatever. My main grab is that I bought the first class for the Wi-Fi and the older cabins simply do not have them. There are some stretches along the way that do not have data connection due to a condition known as being in the bumfuck middle of nowhere. It's the same price whether it's the new or old cabins. So you just have to roll the dice on this one. And this is how the cabins look like. Inside each cabin, there's a personal sink, curtains, mattresses, and two electrical outlets. Kinda reminds you like the train to Hogwarts in Perry Hotter, doesn't it? There's around 12 cabins just like that with the toilet all the way at the front. Now let's see how the toilet looks like. Nothing fancy except that the ceiling's a bit low, a shower head for you to shower, but sometimes in life, just because you can, doesn't mean you should. The temperature's fine though, not too shabby. Maybe it's just me, but I wouldn't want my ass to be in contact with that toilet. Gonna try to flush? Okay, that's it, I'm out. And now it's time to take off. Gonna eat my omelette rice and enjoy the view while the sun's still up. Like I said, there will be people coming up to sell snacks in between stops. Not up to my standard, sanitary-wise, but... Then again, it's for the experience. When the time comes, the conductor converts your day cabin into a sleeper cabin. It's already hard to feed a shit over a mattress when it's stationary. Now, imagine doing it on a moving train. Oh wait, that's actually a cover for the pillow. You want to test my... They say they change, they change the bed sheet, the pillowcase every time. Smell for me. How? Smelly or not? Why? Okay. Why do you smell Anyway, moving on, guardrails to prevent you from rolling over and blankets to complete the experience. Netting to store your whatever and a mini Naito Lito if you're afraid of the dark. After converting all the cabins into beds, it's finally time for a smoke break. For him, not for me. It's just that I just nice capture this scene while waiting for my turn to leave the toilet, so I decided to put this in the video and narrate it. Nothing much left to do since there's no Wi Fi, so I guess I'll just call it a night with the sun rising in 3, 2, 1, action.
after 13 hours, we are finally reaching Bangkok and with no time to spare, let's head on to the second leg of our journey. Now that we have arrived in Bang Su Grand Station in Bangkok, this is where most trains in Thailand eventually end up at. The old one used to be at Hua Lam Pong, but they closed down back in like 2022. A very slash R liminal spaces kind of vibe going on here. We have a bit of time to queue before our next ride, so it's time to freshen up. Now it's time to get aboard. Got my big boy iPad out this time. We bought our tickets online this time and one difference we noticed is that we weren't able to choose the seating arrangements online as compared to IRL. So if you are going to be traveling with three or more packs, then you might need to put this thought into consideration. For this trip, we are taking the second class sleeper cabins. It's almost half the price as compared to a first class sleeper cabin. But so far at first impression, it doesn't really look that bad. Here's how the second class sleeper cabins look like. During daytime traveling, it will be two seats facing each other. Whatever's up there will be converted to a bunk bed when it's time. It's a lot more spacious than expected, considering that it's only for one person. And now it's off to Padang Besa. It's the longest trip on this route, consisting of 18 hours. If everything goes according to plan, we should reach Padang Besa border by 10 a.m. the next day. There's a lot more people coming up to sell stuff this time round. <laughs> Let's check out the toilet after her while the sun's still up. At first glance, it's really small and compact. Extremely small sink that is certainly not good at its job. Nice views out the open window though. So at least we know that the toilet is not stanky due to proper circulation. Makes sense that there's a sink outside the toilet because the one inside doesn't work. Instead of going south straight away, we actually have to go west first. This is due to how Thailand is shaped. So it's kind of like traveling an inverted seven. Another seller on board. This one sells mooping sticky rice. Time to eat my 10 baht fishball bee hoon where the sun sets. I mean, it's 50 sense la, gotta keep my expectations realistic. And as the sun sets, it's time to pull out the bits. Ultimately, the procedure is more or less the same as the first class sleeper cabins, but you get curtains instead of rooms for privacy. There's even a ladder to get to the top bunk. POV of how it looks like to be in the bottom bunk. <laughs> There's our third food seller and she sells hala garlic chicken rice. I bought it not because I want to eat but because it's for the experience. Kanina tana shame for eating all the way. And with that, I'm gonna get my 7 hours of uninterrupted rest. As the sun rose for the next day, we have finally reached the bottom of Thailand. And in about half an hour, we will finally reach our destination. The beds are converted back into seats for day usage. It's time for me to walk over and interview Yam. You pay do M1 And just like that, it felt like 18 hours passed in the blink of an eye and we are finally at the border of Thailand and Malaysia. It's time to pass through the immigration customs and go on to our next journey. The immigration shouldn't be a problem if you are holding a strong passport. And with that being done, we are finally in Malaysia. Since we have about 3 hours to spare, we have decided to go and chill at some cafe nearby as we wait for our next train. Really inaccessible over here and by that I mean that there's no fucking way you are walking over to even the nearest KFC by foot. And yes, while you are able to book a grab, chances are nobody will want to pick you up for a 2 ringgit ride. But then there's always guys outside the railway station ready to pick you up for a little bit more. And that's what we did. <laughs> ยังไงครับ
it's finally time for our next train ride and back to Parambasa train station we go. They have different kinds of tickets as well, starting from Express, moving onwards to Go and then finally Platinum. No way to find out what kind of comfort and services the different types of tickets provide, but one thing's for sure, it's a lot more modern. Without further ado, here's what you get if you're a Platinum ticket holder. Clean, spacious and easy to navigate. There's even a table in the middle, but it's a pity we didn't get to book those seats. Would've been cool. Well, we sat over there anyway. Whoever booked the tickets didn't bought from Parang Besar, so we get to enjoy a little bit before they arrive. The seats are really comfortable and ergonomic. Oh yeah, there's Wi-Fi on the train, but it's not really that good. In fact, it's close to unusable, maybe for the sporadical email notifications. Other than that, you can forget about loading Netflix or whatever. There's an electrical outlet and two USB ports in between the seats though, so I guess that makes up for it. Unlimited power, but no Wi-Fi. It's a 5 hour and 30 minutes journey to Kuala Lumpur and there's certainly some beautiful scenery across the country. I know we always bash Malaysia for things like 3 is to 1, hehe, <laughs> but you gotta give them credit where credit is due. I cannot sit still, so let's check out the toilets this time. As expected, the toilet's a lot cleaner and there's a small little window to air it. With that, I give the toilets an overall rating of 7. Well, there's nothing much to do. Hindsight, there was actually a food store somewhere in the middle of the train that I didn't know until I finished the trip. So, what a waste. Twas, a peaceful journey and without much disruption, we arrived at Kuala Lumpur. With less than 350 kilometers to our destination, we decided to stay one night at KL. Our Airbnb got ghost, but that's a story for another day. We are at KL Central right now, waiting for our ride, and you know, might as well get some food. It's off to Gemat right now with a lower tier ticket, the Go Class. But before that, here's the famous Gong Tai Help Desk interview session. Wow, ไปปิดพม่านไม่มีใครปิดพม่านเพราะว่าเมื่อคืนกลัวผีพี่เอ็มยูตื่นกี่โมงนะน่าจะยังไม่ตื่นนะ you smell it looks like hey you smell time for my breakfast first before anything else the seats are smaller and squeezier, but it still does its job fine. There are three pin plugs, but no USB this time, unlike the platinum cabins. And one thing I noticed is that there are ads on the cabin unlike before. It's a short 2 hours and 40 minutes, and the toilet is basically the same. And now for a short half an hour transit before our next ride. You know, our next train is literally waiting for us already. The last ticket just says express, so you wouldn't really know what to expect until you see it in real life. But for the experience, I am legally binded to get the cheapest one. Let's see how the cabins look like. Before that, let's see how the toilet look like because the smell wafted over and hit me like a fucking truck. Damn, this is not good. The lack of windows allowed the stench to marinate and I could not describe how bad it is right now. But I can show you how bad it is. Without the doors closed, we really see PM over there wearing a mask due to the smell. Yeah. There's a shared power outlet and the seats are minimal at best. The seats are nothing fancy. There's a tray for you to eat your food though. But at a price point of $7 SGD, there's really nothing much you can complain about. You can see they are definitely not having the time of their lives but they gotta suck it up cause nobody point gun and force them to come with me. Since there's nothing to do, I decided to do a little exploring because I think I saw a cafe corner somewhere in the middle of the train. As expected, I bought some food for the experience. There's nothing interesting to eat over there but hey, I'm not complaining. The ride from Gemat to JB is about 5 hours so we will arrive well into the evening and now we are at the last lap of our journey. Just one more ride and we will be in Singapore. Yes, we could very well just cross the customs but uh, that's not fun really what? ขอเล่าให้ฟังว่าเป็นยังไงรู้สึกยังไงสนุกดีธรรมชาติเยอะประสบการณ์ปวดตุ่นมากเอ่อพี่ยังไม่ไหวแล้วมั้งก็เหน
your ticket. After that, it's one level down to the customs officer. Once you are done, it's another level down to the trains and it's free seating and random so you can choose any cabin you desire. The seats are really spacious but it's only 5 minutes so there's that. Well, it actually isn't even 5 minutes but here we are. Finally, after 2,637 kilometers of railroad spanning 41 hours, we have arrived at Singapore. The last hurdle we have to go through is the Singapore customs but even then it shouldn't take too much time to clear them. Well, final thoughts. If you ask me whether this is a worth enough trip to go for, I would say go for it only if you have the time because it's 41 hours it actually eats up quite a lot of time especially in between transits but if you are in it for the experience it's actually quite decent especially the route in Thailand because people coming up to sell stuff on the train that is something that only sheltered little city fucks get to see on the movies they don't actually experience it in real life you can start your journey from Singapore or you can start it from Chiang Mai it doesn't matter but it might be more fun if you are actually planning to have stops in between so that you can actually experience and soak up the cities in between your journey such as Gema nah actually Gema got nothing lah fuck like KL even Hat Yai you can actually stop at Bangkok and then in between Bangkok to Chiang Mai you can stop at some I don't know bum fuck town that actually there's nothing lah you can just go to Chiang Mai lah for my next trip I'm actually planning to cycle up from Singapore all the way to Laos cross the fucking friendship bridge up so if there's anybody from Grab or Food Panda who is seeing this and they want to sponsor me I think gonna be your delivery driver bro be your dog here are the stats and timings for nerds I rate this trip 6.06 out of 10 there's a lot of thought put into how I go and deduce that it's 6.06 out of 10 so don't go and ask me because fucking lazy going to explain to you but anyway this is Kong Tha Desk see you next time bye don't say I never remind you but I got new Kong Tha Help Desk merch right now once sold out no more ready visit kongthawism.com to buy and don't forget to key in the special code kuku tiao salakao thanks for supporting me so I have money to add cheese fries when I order KFC Maybe don't need a